And just like that, we are live again, guys. We're here. Man, today, guys, a special day for us with the MMA Fight Pass and the Hammer Fist Podcast. <clears throat> this is our special 50th episode of virtual podcasting. Uh, it's our it's episode 119 of our total podcast. But since we since COVID happened and uh, we started doing the virtual podcast, it's our 50th episode, and uh, we're we're real happy today to introduce guys. Uh, he's a Brazilian born Gracie Jiu Jitsu Grandmaster. This man is a writer. He's a publisher. He's a producer. He does lectures, and one of my favorite things about him is he's the co-founder of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Guys, uh, a lot of you guys know him already. Amen. Uh, please Ooh. welcome welcome to the show, Mister Horion Gracie. Thank thank you, Welcome. bro. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> it's great to be here. And uh, you're doing a great work. So I want to be a part of this. I want to be part of history with you guys. All right. Oh, man. This is history for sure. Uh, I'm super happy to have you here, bro. We've been following the family since uh, since the mm -hmm. beginning, man. You know, so, or since the first time I saw UFC 1 and so on. So, yeah. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day. I know you got multiple things going on. And uh, it's a busy lifestyle that you live. So uh, yeah. me and Archie are just really want to thank you for taking the time out of that busy life and joining us today. It's all Archie, how are you? Yeah, doing well. No, uh, Orian, I, I too want to welcome you from Fresno, California, uh, the Central Valley. Uh, here, a lot of uh, jiu-jitsu schools, practitioners. As a matter of fact, we're holding an event February 21st. Uh, series. We're holding a one-on-one -on -one jiu jitsu event. We have 40 match, uh, 30 matches uh, matched up, ready to go, February 21st in Fresno. Great, wonderful news. This is exciting. Yes, we're we're looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be a submission only grappling tournament, and uh, we're just trying to get things back in action since all the tournaments and everything have been kind of shut down and on lockdown. Yeah, um, Horion, where exactly are you at down there, down south? I am in. Um, Rolling Hills Estates, next to Palo Verdes in California. Okay, and Paul. Yeah. Now you have an academy right there. Is that where you're at right now? Um, actually, no. The academy was in Torrance. It's nearby, about 10, 15 minutes from here. That's where the academy used to be. Yes. Okay. How's life down there with the COVID? Uh, amazing. You know, I have a. <laughs> I live in an area, the kind of a rural area. In fact, you know, it's a lot of trees and you know, trails and stuff like that. And I have a chance to ride my horse every day. Oh, and uh, oh, which is really good, you know, can't complain. And there's about 40 miles of trails in the neighborhood I live in, so it's really good. I, I have, I'm having fun. I did not know the Gracie brothers rode horses. I love it. I grew up on a horse <clears throat> back in Brazil with my dad, you know, awesome. was a couple of years old. <clears throat> Angel fact, Lopez, <clears throat> one of our jujitsu brothers, tuned in. Uh, he has a school here in Fresno. Angel Lopez, thank you for tuning in, my brother. Uh, a lot of man, I had a lot of people when I announced that we were having you on the show, bro. Uh, a lot of our fans got excited. Uh, this area right here, you may have been here, but uh, um, one of the one of our friends, Tosh Cook in Fresno, has a school. He's a black belt underneath uh, Hoist Gracie, oh, I believe. Yeah, I remember Tosh very well. Yes, good guy. Oh, good, nice. Yeah, Tosh has been on our show several times, and he talks about the family and and nothing but you know great things. And and again, it's an honor, you know, just to just to have you on our screen i wish we could have you next to us but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> well one, hey once things once things open up again uh me and archie we uh part of mma fight pass our company we do a show that's uh the main thing that we like to do it's a show called inside the dojo mm -hmm. and where we where we travel around to different jujitsu and mma dojos wow. and uh we'll get on the mat with you guys and we get to learn some knowledge and, and get to interview you yourself and then really? whoever you know you're your sons, uh, I've always been big fans of your sons. Uh, they are your sons, right, uh, Henner and Hiron? They are my sons also, yes. Awesome. I have, I, they're the two older boys. I have 10 kids. 10 kids. I need all the help I can get. Yes. Yeah. Are you, dude, 10 kids? <laughs> How many of them are boys? How many are boys? <laughs> it's pretty even. Seven boys and three girls. All Do they all train? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Dude, that nice. is amazing, man. That's freaking <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. And now Hoist Gracie, is he the your younger brother? No, he's not my youngest. He's younger than me, of course, but he's one of the youngest. No, there's about three people. There's three more below him. Now, uh, your father is Helio Gracie, right? Helio, yes. Helio, Helio. Gracie, yeah. I'll probably murder some of your guys' names. Even yours. Um, 
Can you say your name for me the way that you say it, please? Horion. Horion? Horion, yeah. Okay, so we'll get, uh, get that one right at least. Yes. Um, <laughs> now, your son's... Uh, the constellation Orion with an R. Horion. Hor 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 okay, right. Yeah. Okay. Was inspired. You know, now I'm hanging out with you guys here. So he's right. There Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Man, I I've gotten I've had the chance to meet a few of uh you brothers, but I never got the chance to meet your father. And uh he see man, your father to me just seemed like one of the most gentle type of uh guys. Seemed like he had a great attitude. And uh could we start off? Would you mind talking about your father a little bit and how your father uh got started in jiu-jitsu? Well, you know, be glad to tell the story. Yeah, uncle, my family has been involved in jiu-jitsu for over 100 years. Uh, since uh, Mitsui wow. Maeda came to Brazil, apparently as an aide to the Japanese immigration colony back in like 1914, 15, something like that. My grandfather was a very influential man at the time in northern Brazil, a businessman, and helped Mr. Maeda get settled in northern Brazil. And then to show gratitude, he offered to teach jiu-jitsu to my then 13, 14-year-old uncle Carlos. Uncle Carlos trained with Mr. Maeda for a few years. And when the family moved from northern Brazil to Rio, before northern Brazil, meaning by the Amazon, the state of Belém, the Pará, mm -hmm. and the city of Belém. And then they moved to Rio in the early 20s. Uncle Carlos then started teaching Jiu Jitsu, you know, sharing his knowledge. And of course, sharing with his brothers. My father was the youngest of the five boys and uh, 11 years younger than my Uncle Carlos. And apparently, had a frail health. He would run up a flight of stairs and a fainting spell. So nobody knew exactly why. So he was told by the doctors at the time to be kept away from any kind of physical activity. So he was to spend time watching his brother's strange jiu-jitsu and so forth. Until one day when he was 16 years old, a student came for a class. My uncles were not around to teach the class. And my father offered to teach the men a lesson, which he agreed. Come on, kid, let's play. So my father stepped on the mat based on what he has watched and memorized from watching his brothers and taught the guy a class. By the time they got done, Uncle Carlos showed up, very apologetic. I'm so sorry. I'm late. Let's have the class now. And the guy said, no, Carlos, I had a class with your little brother, anyway, and I liked it. In fact, I'd like to be his student from now on. So my dad was actually promoted to be a student by his own, by, to be a teacher by his own student. Oh, and right. what he realized is that the techniques he was practicing based on the, watching his brothers and the Japanese techniques at the time, he were kind of hard for him to execute. So based on that, he's trying to trial and error he started modifying the concepts of the technique and adjusting, making shorter moves, you know, natural positions and so forth, thus improve, improving the technique so that he could become proficient in spite of his, like I said, his frail body at the time. So as he started modifying the techniques and becoming more and more efficient with that, eventually it's what gave birth to what you know today as Gracie Jiu Jitsu or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know. <clears throat> it was his, his touch in making the things very efficient. Primarily improving his wow. invincibility. He wasn't the guy who would go out chasing and finishing everybody up. His concern was not to lose the fight. So he developed a concept of fighting that he become protecting himself and becoming literally uh, very, you know, hard to defeat. <clears throat> that so story amazing. never gets old, bro. <laughs> That's amazing history there. Yeah. And, and besides that, in my, one of my opinions, one of his biggest contributions contributions was the fact that he developed a teaching methodology that would yeah. enable him to get literally anybody and help the guys who become proficient instructors, you know, students, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, nowadays you see people competing in tournaments, they become very good, very tough guys, and then they get a medal, they become black belts, and then they say, well, I'm a black belt, I won the championship, I'm going to open my own school. But this guy never really learned how to teach. You know, he was never introduced to that concept. And my father, on the other hand, going out of his way, first of all, in the old days, he only taught private classes. So he had a student who is not an athlete, right? The guy's a doctor, an attorney, or whatever, an engineer. He's, you know, a person who doesn't want to be hurt or, or be thrown around sparring with a whole bunch of people. So my father's concept was he would show the student, you know, you know, three techniques in a class, and then show the person how to use the defense of those techniques. What if the guy gets you on the neck? for example, right? The guy doesn't know what to do. So he said, well, grab my neck. The person would grab his neck. He would show the defense. And then he would repeat the attack on the students and kind of walk the student through the movement so that the guy would learn how to execute the move. So he would do that about three moves, for example, in the first class. When the guy came back for the next class, those are half an hour classes, by the way, so that you know, private classes. 
The guy would come back for the following class. He would repeat these three moves, tweaking whatever he had to do to correct, and then add three new moves, work more intensely on the new ones. The next class, he would repeat the nine, the six previous moves, and add three new ones. In other words, every time the student came to class, my father would repeat all the techniques, tweaking a little bit to make sure they were right, but the repetition continuously would educate and condition the person's reflex. So mm -hmm. after 10 classes, the guy has 30 moves. You know what I'm saying? That he's yeah. working, the more he does it, the more proficient he gets. And was always adjusting a little by little. Within the same time or half an hour, he keep adding moves and the student automatically be doing faster and faster and faster. And as he repeated those moves, they become second nature for the student, which is ultimately what you want. Right. Like if you're driving a car and the kid crosses the street, if you have to choose which one is the brake, you're going to hit the kid. But if, because you've done it so many times, you step on the brake without thinking. That is the kind of condition that my father worked on, fine-tuned, and perfected so he could implement that on everybody. So the student who is not a physical guy, or strong or fast mm -hmm. or athlete, because the condition reflex was so ingrained on him, Right. Even the guy who's not an athlete, like I said, he would respond to the attacks just as a result of that continuous practice. And that would transform people's mindset, blow them away, because they say, wow, sometimes my father comes up and punch and kick and do all that kind of stuff with a knife or a club or whatever, and the guy would respond. That would be huge for his confidence. You build the guy's self-confidence like nothing else. So the ability to play the dummy or the attacker to allow the student to throw you around so that he can perform the technique effectively makes magic for the students. And that's wow. the kind of thing that my father fine-tuned. And that's how I learned how to teach myself. You know what I'm saying? This is what I spent my whole life watching him. I was a huge fan of the old man. And all my life, I taught jiu-jitsu that way. That's the only way for me to do it is that you show the student the technique, he practices on you. Versus having 20, 30 people in the mat say, hey, guys, spar, pass a guard, you know, choke. And people are just bang each other. They don't know exactly what's happening. They're just hurting each other, twisting too much. They don't have the experience of how to do, how to control the amount of pressure. Sometimes people get hurt and this and that. Not to mention that because the standing up aspect of self-defense is very complex and there's so many moves, most people just skip that part. They go right into the India sportive aspect of it and, and the competition and this and that, which is fun and important to do as well. But you can't skip that huge chunk of the standing up self-defense aspect of it because the truth is if you're in a parking in a park on a parking lot or in a bar or in a supermarket, you know, by yourself or with a family, that's how the fight starts. You're standing up, you know, you're not in the ground with someone in the guard, you know what I'm saying, right. to start a fight. So, you know, for me, it has always been a very important aspect. Like I said, for me, it was one of the main things my father did was not only to fine tune those techniques to make it efficient for anybody to be able to execute the moves, but more importantly, to develop a teaching methodology that enables the instructor to be able to pass that information correctly. In fact, I'm gonna take a second here to ask if you guys, are you familiar with this book? I don't have a copy, but man, it looks beautiful. I know, I beautiful. That awesome. You haven't seen the book? No? <laughs> We need I, a copy. I've seen it, but I do not. I don't. I do not own it. Okay, but have you seen the book? Is my yes, question. yes. I've seen it. Okay, because the book is about is a, is a program oh, that I'm wow. telling you about. You understand all the yeah. self defense techniques, the scanning up self defense techniques that my father perfected and developed. It's all in here. You follow me? Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. Now, more importantly is that because I want, I really want the people to be familiarized with the concept of the book, I came up with another brilliant idea, which is this. I'm oh, sorry. yeah. Sorry, guys. That's so, all right. So you have an app, yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah. Come on. Let's get this up here. I came up with an app. Let me see. Oh, OK. That allows you, go back for one second. Sorry, John. Nope, it's, it's all okay. right. Take your time. Many of you know the Jiu Jitsu book by Grandmaster. Yeah. Eric. I'm happy to announce that we're releasing a revised edition yeah. that will include a whole new chapter about his life philosophy. Plus, a new app that you can download for free on the App Store or Google Play. Oh. We'll read the first edition as well as the second edition. It will enable you to watch every single technique, wow. every angle. Oh my god, that is awesome! Just click here. If you press the pause button, you can see it like this. 
Check it out. It's absolutely incredible. Is that 3D? Wow. That is a 3D animation that you can see through augmented reality. You the book, oh my the app God. reads the book, and you can see my father and I doing the move. It's not a photographic anymore. It's an actual animation. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Hey, do you, Horian, do you remember the, technology. Wow. before all this internet and everything and all these apps, uh, what I did own from you guys was, it was a, it was a CD. Oh and it was man, a, you were a guy. Remember that? No, of course I remember that. <laughs> CD, 1995, I remember. It was a long time ago. Good it was a you. long time, it was a long time ago. And man, that thing, it was ahead of its time. Yes. Um, at that time, it was ahead of its time. Uh, what was the name of it? It was, it was something three. Is it, I is can't it, remember. Is it, is it Cube? It's called the Cube. The Gracie yes. Cube. Yes. Program. That Very thing cool. was awesome. Yeah. It had a lot of those, uh, this, uh, talking about those stand up self defense techniques. If you go to just about any school, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school nowadays, and I go to a lot of them, I'm able to just <clears throat> travel around and go into the schools and train. Usually you're, they throw you right into sport Jiu Jitsu right. aspect. That's it's right. very, very seldom that you're going to have an instructor that will teach you these like basic wrist escapes and yeah. neck escapes and the bear hug escape, simple yeah. things like that. Um, and that I'm seems sure. like that app, and the I'm app sure covers that. Say, they're not trying to hide it. Something that's just never been introduced to the idea, you know? Exactly, exactly. Some hmm. of them have, but a lot of them haven't. Yes. And I think as uh, jujitsu continues to go and the black belts are passed out, I think it gets a little bit watered down, watered down, watered yeah, down, right. unless you can go to one of these places uh, like the academy to learn that, or maybe some. I know Tosh Cook uh, teaches that type of stuff, cool, because um, he's directly under your guys' family and code. That's yeah. awesome. That app, so that app uh, can be reached the Google Play Store, the Google Play and App Store in Google Play. It's a free download, and uh, the name of it is Gracie Jiu Jitsu. But you need to have the book. And then eventually, I'm sure we're going to put the link for the book in here so that people oh. can have access to the book. Anybody who has the book, either the old or the first edition or the second edition, will be able to see this stuff. It's really, it's a great stuff. It's really exciting for me to, oh, to share that information with everyone. Man, that's awesome, dude. That app. So you guys nice. see it right there. Get some of the old school aspect of it. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Is there anything else right off hand that you had, oh. that, that you guys got going on that you would like us to post up so people can see? Uh, here we go. This is this yeah. is the book. This is the book. Yeah. Anybody who has this book, whether the first edition or the second edition, like I said, you put the app on your phone, download the app for free, and then you point it, you know, you open the book on the technique page, I guess starts page 20, and then you can actually see the movements and stuff like that. And you can pause it from 360 degrees. It's really fascinating piece of information in there. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, of course. You know, there's lots of stories that we can share and talk to you guys about, and uh, I can be glad to promote it here. The concept of the Gracie Museum, you know, GracieMuseum.com is where you can see the tour of the museum we have at the Gracie, and we had at the Gracie Academy. That I tell a lot of stories from the Gracie family history and the past and the early days and that kind of stuff and photographs, and it's a very interesting opportunity also because a museum is a 3D museum. You actually go in there. And if you have those Google glasses, you can uh -huh. actually look around it, like, you know, check oh, out. no way. Oh, yeah. Virtual <laughs> reality, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. GracieMuseum.com is the site. Yes, it's really cool, too. And, guys, that you're out there watching this, hey, I know a lot of you train at great – there's a lot of great schools around here. And I'm not just talking about the Central Valley. I'm talking to anybody who gets on the show and watches this later on. Hey, don't think just because you're under a world champion or whoever you're training with that – you're stuck there and you can't look at stuff like this. You, the knowledge, man, you can always get knowledge from, if you have a, a good instructor, he's going to be willing for to let you and allow you to gain knowledge from other places. And this is a perfect example of it. Uh, yeah. Take the time, man. Take it's, it's not only is it interesting, but you're going to get a lot of information of going back into the history and looking yeah. at these basic techniques. You might see one of these moves and, Oh, how's that going to help me in a jujitsu tournament? Trust mm -hmm. me. Those simple uh, techniques like an outside wrist escape, they're teaching you things that will go into your later advanced moves, uh, leverage, the technique, the movement. It's all it's all good stuff. So is that it right there? That's the Gracie Museum, huh? Yeah. Instead of just clicking on it, uh, Archie, what you want to do is that you want to bring your your, your uh, cursor in there and move around it. You can see all over the place. Oh, I see. Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh! Look at all that. Yeah, you can actually go into the museum and turn around and. If you got the goggles, you can. You're inside there, and you can look around. Right. Even if you don't have the goggles, you can just go in there, click on the floor. Archie on the floor on the museum. Oh, on the floor. Yeah. And then move around if you want. I think that you can. Yeah, oh wow. You can, you can, Everybody you can, needs yeah, to go to this. Great, yeah, you can go to com. Yeah, you can look, look around like that. that. You know what I'm saying? You can check it out. Now, the little dots, yellow and green, is the English or Portuguese version of the stories I tell in the museum, a different, you know what I'm saying? So let's translate it to English and Portuguese, all that. A whole bunch of history and, you know, recognition coins, family tree, and all kinds of stuff. So it's really exciting stuff. So people are going to enjoy where Horion, where is this uh, the real museum located at? This museum was at the academy in Torrance. Oh. But now we have moved on and now we made it virtual so that you don't have to come to the academy. You can watch it from wherever you are. So you can actually take a tour, you know, on the museum, regardless of where you are. Just go gracymuseum.com and check it out and visit and learn comments and stuff like that. And you can it's a virtual museum nowadays. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So man, dude, this is good stuff right here. I'm so stoked. Hey, yeah, we'll put, the, uh, we'll put of, the website at the bottom there. Let, we'll let it scroll so people can look at it. Go ahead, yep. Tom. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So another, uh, uh, I've had questions coming in all, you know, for the last couple of weeks. But uh, one of my training partners and one of my coaches uh, is a longtime student of martial arts, uh, Louis Thomas. He's from the area here. Uh, he had a question for you. And uh, he's a guy that came out of uh, Jeet Kune Do was his first kind of where he trained. And mm -hmm. he. Uh, came in and started training jujitsu with myself at my school, <clears throat> and uh, he kind of fell in love with the jujitsu. His question for you, because it's kind of it's a question for me too. Um, if you when you go to a jujitsu school, a lot of BJJ schools nowadays, it's a lot of it as we talked about a second ago is sport aspect and uh -huh. sport related. Um, how does a person like if say you're into both of them? But how do you separate the two, self-defense training and sport jujitsu training? You know what I mean? So you don't, a, guy, a guy doesn't have the wrong idea when he goes out on the street and he's not pulling guard or trying to do like a De La Riva guard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, Talk about that, sir, a little bit if you would. Yeah. You know, here you're touching a point that is really important that more and more people are just thinking about the sport jujitsu and because they have not been introduced to the teaching program of the complete self-defense course, which we have on the book, they just find themselves repeating what they learned, which is only natural. You know, like I said, the guy, you know, trains you know, in a competition, in a, in a sport jiu-jitsu uh, school, gets more and more into it, competes, open up, you know, gets a medal, becomes a black belt, wins a championship. Now he opens up a school. How can he teach something else? He's going to be doing the same old thing. And uh, that's the, the unfortunate part of the whole thing, that people get more and more into it. They're somehow they're losing the contact with the essence, which is ultimately is self-defense. Jiu-Jitsu is an art of self-defense. So mm -hmm. one way for me to, to kind of enlighten everybody is the next time you go to a school and uh, you're sparring with your friends in a very friendly, loving way, think about touching each other on the face like that. So if you're sparring with someone and the person can continuously touch your face, it's because in a real fight, you would be vulnerable to get punched on the face. Oh, wow. So your sparring should be keeping in mind, if you're yeah. training for self-defense, that you are continuously protected and you're not going to get slapped on the face. Now, I'm not suggesting anybody to hit each other, of course. You know, I grew up with my brothers playing like this, just smack each other on the back of the head, just to make sure that the opening is not available. Right. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Next time you play with someone, you're sparring in a class, Say, hey, let's just very lightly touch each other so that you can say, hey, I'm protecting you. In other words, you have to be aware of that. Because if you're learning jiu-jitsu, you know, like you said, and you're, you're sparring with someone, and anytime the guy, the opponent wants to punch you in the face, he's has, he has access to that, something is missing on your training. I mean, it's fun that you do just this sport in the point system. It's okay to get medals. But if your objective is to learn jiu-jitsu as self-defense, which was, it, you know, the original intention, you know, from the beginning, of developing the art back in the days, you, you probably might be missing the boat if you see yourself getting, you know, exposed that way. So that's one yeah. mission to get to the point real quick. And I love the I love the fact that every time you talk and you teach the you know the sport, you're talking about real life situations, right? Okay, yeah, we're practicing jujitsu, but guess what? If the hand touches your face, you, you know, you're vulnerable, right? That's right. 
It's you know? amazing how you put that together. Yeah. And what about uh, pulling guard? Like I know a lot of guys pull guard and there's a lot of techniques that come from pulling guard nowadays. But how do you feel about pulling guard? Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes that's what you have to do. If the guy that you're working with or the situation requires that, the ability to pull guard is important, you know? You need to have a good guard defense and knowing how to, you know, but don't just pull guard and, you know, score a point and hold on to dear life so that hoping the clock ticks and you win the match because you have two points and you're able to stall throughout the whole fight. That shouldn't be the mindset. Right. You know, the idea is you pull guard if you have to, but you want to reverse the game. You want to go for submissions. You want to try other stuff. <laughs> good stuff now in sport jiu-jitsu competition um who who was uh the guy that started the ibjjf league um, is that does that come from great from the gracie family ibjjf is it my cousin Carlos? that's the other one yeah i think carlos gracie jr yeah he's he, he was a so fed, prior to that, there was a jiu-jitsu a jiu -jitsu federation that my father was the president way back when, in 1967, I think, something like that, which established yeah, the I mean, belt system. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Anyways, which established ahead. the belt system, the rules, and everything else for jiu-jitsu tournament, you know? And then as the federation started growing, the popularity started growing a lot, uh, you know, there was a stage that my people, a lot of people are receiving belts and being promoted. In fact, my father did not like that. And he was a red belt, and the other people receiving red belts. So he decided to wear a blue belt just to show that his disapproval. If all these people are red belt, I, I'm, I'm, I'm backing out of this. So he started wearing a blue belt for a long time. <laughs> I remember that. I remember, I remember seeing pictures. Anyway, so because of that, he started doing that. And then eventually, as time went by, he kind of got tired of that activity because people were competing, receiving belts too much and stuff like that. And he didn't approve all that. So he kind of stepped away from the Federation. And then my cousin Carlos took over and then uh, made the whole thing, you know, expand and spend time doing that and promoting tournaments and stuff like that. And now it's all over the place. Jiu Jitsu is, is uh, you know, it's a national, international phenomenon. It's growing everywhere. It's and literally so, all over the world. It's uh, all over the world. And I have I'm a question. Sure what anybody says uh, a big part of that is thanks to your family. Yeah. You know what I mean? I big thing, thanks to your family. Now, yeah. Jiu Jitsu, uh, when it, in the United States, and around the world, when the competition jiu-jitsu started back at, back in the day, like in, you know, or maybe mm -hmm. not when it started, but back in the early 80s up, uh, from the 80s till now, it's it's changed quite a bit. Um, did, has it evolved the way that you expected? Um, two things. Number one, um, I knew that jiu-jitsu was going to take over the world. When I came here in 1978, when I decided to move for good, at first, it was in 1969. My ticket was stolen, all that kind of stuff. I ended up staying here for a year. Ben Haley on the street, wow. and myself struggling for a little bit. Then I went back to Brazil, went to law school in Brazil. And after finishing law school in 78, I came back with the objective of teaching jiu-jitsu to America, knowing that if America liked it, the world would embrace it. Now, I knew while teaching the garage that jiu-jitsu was going to be an explosion. The world was going to fall in love with it. I knew that then. I had no doubt whatsoever. Now, what I could not imagine is that the internet was going to be developed and the cell phones would be now, you know, a computer in your hands. And, and <laughs> right. I didn't know that. How can I project, right? So I had no idea. But I knew that jiu-jitsu was going to be successful. As far as the constant explosion there is right now, I don't really follow jiu-jitsu tournaments anymore. I don't do that. I don't know if you are, who is the current world champion. I don't know because I'm busy with other projects. And right. uh, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of the idea of the guy who wins a jiu-jitsu tournament and loses a street fight. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't think that makes sense. You right, know, the jiu-jitsu right. champion should not get beat up on the street. Not because he's the jiu-jitsu champion, but the jiu-jitsu that he practices mm -hmm. is realistic enough to enable him to do well. So if a guy practices jiu-jitsu at a school and he does a couple of moves very well, and then during the tournament with a five-minute or seven-minute round or whatever, 10-minute round, he goes and he scores a couple of points, and he spends eight minutes holding on to a cross mount, hoping that the clock ends so he can be the next champion. That is not the mindset that I can appreciate. I don't think right. that's the right state of mind. And a lot right. of people, you know, they score a point or an advantage, 
of whatever the, 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 the little difference that is, and they just hold on to that. Hold on, hold on. They're clocking. I mean, what is this? You know what I'm saying? I, that doesn't make sense for me. So to, to see if it has evolved, I think to, to that effect, it has devolved. You know what I'm saying? It has walked backward mm -hmm. because you shouldn't encourage people to think and, and behave and act that way. But a lot of people do it because they're more concerned about winning a medal than really trying to submit the other guy, which sometimes is a hard thing to do. Because everybody's learning, there's a natural evolution for everyone. The, the bar is higher now, and it's more difficult. And, you know, and with a five-minute time limit, it's difficult. You know, then all this kind of stuff happens, which is one of the reasons why I decided to sell the UFC, you know. On the beginning. So, yes, yeah. go ahead. A question, Arch. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, no, that was perfect. I mean, I kind of segue into the UFC. You know, you, you, you talk about self-defense. Is that why, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about – uh, the UFC, how, how you guys started it. What were the reasons to start that? Was that to to show the self defense and, and not just to say, okay, we're gonna go come compete and, and and get a medal, but we're going to fight to the finish to win to see who is the victor, right? I mean, so can you talk about that? Yes, of course. Um, like I said, when I came back in 1978, after the first year of you know struggles and ups and downs, I made some good friends here when I was here for the first time in 1969, 70. So Jimmy Hendrix in concert and stuff like that it was a great experience. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yes, man, Jimmy. Anyway, so I went back to Brazil after one year. And uh, in 78, I decided to come back, like I said. When I returned to the States, I had stayed the opportunity to stay with some friends that I met on my first trip. And uh, I worked at a restaurant called White Castle, you know, making the mini burgers. So I came yeah. back and I talked to my friend. And he said, Hold, you can stay here in the house. And his mother happens to be an actress. So the lady would go to work in the studios, you know what I'm saying? And I'll be home alone. But instead of doing nothing all day, I'm washing the windows, I'm cutting the grass, I'm cooking dinner, I'm cleaning the bathrooms, anything to do to show appreciation for her that I would stay at her place. Eventually, right. I need to find a job. She said, what do you want to do? I said, anything. Do you want to clean people's homes? I said, of course. So she started calling her <laughs> friends in the business. Hold does great cleaning work. Oh, send him over here, over here. And I'm going to clean everybody's houses, right? Eventually, oh, cool. I lived in the house of a woman whose husband was the assistant director on the TV show Starsky and Hutch, remember with the two cops. And then uh, she said, hey, you know, went to first day at the house. She said, you're a look, good-looking guy. How come you're not in the movie business? I said, that's right. How come I'm not in the movie business? <laughs> <laughs> she said, pictures, and I'll have my husband take me to a casting office. So I hung up my cleaning room, took a couple of pictures, and the husband took me to central casting. And I started doing extra work on anything from Fantasy Island, Hill Street Blues, Heart to Heart, Simon and Simon, Quincy, Rockford Files, all those TV shows during the 80s. I'm working on all of them on the background. At the same time, I left the lady's house, put some mats in my garage on 3rd Street, Hermosa Beach, and every person I met anywhere, I invited them for a free class. So people would come for a free class. I happen, oh, wow. to, I happen to be an amazing teacher. People get hooked immediately, if not sooner. So they come in for the first class, love it. I said, if you bring a friend, I'll get you another free class. If you bring 10 friends, I'll get you 10 free classes. So everybody start telling their friends about jujitsu because they want to get another free class. So <laughs> the, 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 the publicity of this stuff started growing more and more. It didn't take long until some of those students would say, Hardy, my former Kung Fu instructor is jealous that I stopped training Kung Fu and now I'm training jujitsu with you. He wants to challenge you to a fight. Would you accept that? I said, of course, bring him in. So the guy who bring his Kung wow. Fu will fight me in the garage. And I'll take that opportunity to do a little marketing and then tell my students, hey, when, Thursday night, mm -hmm. 7 o'clock, a Kung Fu guy is showing up. So the students all piled up in the garage to see the fight, right? The real deal. <clears throat> and because, as you know, Jiu-Jitsu gives you the elements of controlling the opponent without having to hurt them. It right. actually humanizes the practitioner. So I had the elements of embracing my opponents, you know, get into a clinch, take them to the ground carefully, sit on top of them in a mount position. They would struggle. They couldn't get out eventually give up. But nobody was getting beat up to a pulp. There was no blood in the mat. I didn't hurt myself. Nothing. Just my hands. It just everything is very friendly. Some of the guys who get so shocked, they say, gosh, this is so cool. I've been training martial arts for 20 years and I couldn't move. I said, that's right. Can I learn? I said, of course. Sign up. And the guy would become my friend and student of mine and walk out of there telling everybody about jiu-jitsu. So after 10 years in my garage, Archie, to get to your point, and no, keep going. And hundreds of challenge matches like that, it dawned on me that with 250 million people in this country, it was never going to end. Yeah. So that's when I had the idea of creating the UFC. I said, yeah. you know what? we got to find a way. In fact, we have a DVD called Gracie Jiu-Jitsu in action. Yes. In action, it shows some of the challenge matches we had. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not the ones on the garage, because in the garage yeah. days, I had no money to buy a camera. But those happened after I opened the first school, after I moved to the garage, opened the first school in Torrance, and then Challenge Mask kept happening, and I have few, you know, clipped a few of those tapes together. I made the Jiu Jitsu in action tapes. Anyway, so those challenge maps happened over and over and over. And then eventually I said, you know what? It's not going to work. So I decided the idea to come up with the UFC. So I came up with the UFC and put together the, the concept for the event. And then uh, Hoist goes in there, puts on a show, right? The smallest guy oh, in the life. Yeah. everybody out. First UFC, he doesn't throw one punch. Hoist doesn't throw one punch. <laughs> Let's see. It rocked everybody's mind and shocked the world and everything else. In fact, after the first event, the U.S. Army called me up. Mr. Grace, really? the little guy beat the big guy. We need to learn this. And asked me to create a program, a hand-to-hand combatters program for them, which I did. And until nowadays, is the current hand-to-hand combatters program for the Army is all based on jiu stuff that I work with them myself. Anyway, wow. so that boom, happened to explode, right, and put the word out there. And then after the UFC 4, I don't know if you guys remember that, Hoist fights Dan Severn. Yes, the travel mm-hmm. truck. Yeah, the big Hugh the Bear. Until then, we had a two-hour window for pay-per-view for satellite oh. transmission. Okay. Miraculously, there was no time, as you know, no time limits, no points, no gloves, no judges. There was two guys walk in, we close the octagon, and they fight until one guy win. UFC one, two, and three lasted exactly two hours. Wow. All right. Perfect timing. UFC four, the show lasts two hours and three minutes. Hoist fighting then seven. The fight goes on. And at two hours exactly, the satellite transmission to the world is interrupted. Oh. Everybody who paid to see the show live on pay-per-view bang, went blank. The biggest mishap in pay-per-view history was that deal, right? And right in the yeah. crux of it. Anyways, because of that, we lost a lot of money. We have to play the show back. We have to refund a lot of people. It was crazy. Oh, very, wow. very, bad, very bad. But the publicity that we got, money couldn't buy it. It was right. so, next day, that's all everybody was talking about. Did you see the fight last night? What fight? Oh, my God, you didn't see the UFC? So it was a big fight for us. It was so wild that I had people calling me to compliment me. Oh, you're a marketing genius. I bet you did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, just to add everybody <laughs> Oh, my God, the guy's a genius. He stopped right before. Imagine the World Cup, you know, soccer World Cup. If you're a fan, a football fan, football fan. In the last five minutes, you stop the game. I mean, what? Can't do that. Anyway, yeah. bottom line is this. Because of that, my partner decided to implement time limit. He said, oh, we had to put rounds so that we can plan the show because it has to be within a certain amount of time. You can't just let it go because until then, the fights had no time limit. Some would right. last 15 seconds or one minute, 10 minutes, 15. Nobody knew. I said, for, because I'm the, the producer of the show, I said, no, I want the fight to be a real fight. And to be a real fight, you can't have rounds. Two guys mm-hmm. walk in, they fight until they quit. That's what my mm-hmm. vision of UFC was. After this incident, UFC 4, we had to refund everybody. My partners came to me and said, Hario, we have to put time limits because if it happens again, they might not ever air the show again. We might lose the show altogether. So I said, I understand. You know, it's the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules, right? So right, the guy right, right. Now, help me finance the show and make the whole thing happen, put it on TV, the whole deal. I said, okay, on that note, what we're going to do is that we are going to, uh, <clears throat> they want to put time limits. I said, you're going to put time limits, you're going to kill the show. What do you mean? I said, the reason the little guy can defeat the big guy is because with no time limits, the little guy has time to tire the big guy out and then win mm-hmm. the fight. Hoist is not going to beat Dan Seven in a five-minute round. It took him 14 and a half minutes to get it. Yeah. Understand? Mm-hmm. Number one. Now, if you put time limits, that's not going to happen. You have to have people in the same weight class to make it reasonable. Understand? Right. Right? If you put people in the same weight class now, mm-hmm. what happens is if nobody wins, you need judges to determine who threw a better punch, a better kick, more punch, more kicks, whatever that is. It becomes subjective to the interpretation of the judge. It's no longer the fighters in the ring deciding. You follow me? It changed. Wow. The yeah, no, absolutely. Wow. Last but not least, I told the guys, if you have a person on a perfect chokehold, if you do it right, it takes six seconds to render the person unconscious. Six. What if three seconds into the chokehold, the bell rings? You have to let go. So the guy who's going to fall asleep in three more seconds is now on the corner recovering, drinking water, aware of the fear of the choke, comes back, 
stays away, scores a couple of kicks, and sometimes wins the fight. Yeah. It's no longer a real fight. It's an entertainment piece. So since I saw this, point, I don't watch it anymore. Because hmm. sometimes you see the guy who did a great fight, but for whatever reason, he lost the fight. The other one won by points. I mean, the fight is not decided by the fighters anymore. The guy who wins the UFC today, it's not necessarily the better fighter. And that's out of my beliefs. I said, no, this is not what I envisioned. So I agreed to sell my interest on the company at that time, 1995, and I moved on. And I don't regret it, just for the record. Because for me, it's a question of principle. I want the better guy to be the winner. With the rules, the way they move the whole thing around nowadays. I mean, it's a great show. Don't take me wrong. And the guys have taken it to a platform, to a level that I don't know if I was going to be able to do it, number one, because they put millions and millions of dollars to make the show explode. So I'm a huge fan of the work they've done. Marketing-wise, the guys are genius. You know, Dana White and the Fatiha and those guys, they took it away right. big time. Before that, I just sold it to my partner, my partner Bob Marovitz, who owns Semaphore. He bought me out, and he carried on the show for a couple of years, and eventually he sold to the Fatihas. And now, it recently, a couple of years ago, it was sold for $2.4 I mean, $4.2 million. So right. my idea was good. Don't take me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the bottom line for me, gentlemen, is that it's an entertainment show. You follow me? It's not yes. necessarily a real fight. I mean, don't take me wrong. Those guys are amazing athletes, right. really tough guys, all of them. And as I hoped and predicted, everybody now learns jiu-jitsu. So I accomplished my mission oh, yeah. coming to America and sharing jiu-jitsu with the world. Let me see here. Okay, got a couple of more minutes for us to talk about this. And uh, so now that I have fulfilled the dream of sharing jiu-jitsu with the world, with the army, the military, every major law enforcement in the country now has embraced jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it's all over the place. And of course, martial arts of all styles are now embracing learning jiu-jitsu too. So I'm very happy with my with my uh, mission being accomplished, fulfilling my dream. Like I said, back in the garage days, I used to tell people it's going to change the world. And they said, oh, man, you're crazy. You're, you, know, you don't even know how to speak English yet. You teach out of a garage. You're going to change the world. Guess what? Been there, done that. Until one day after the UFC, <clears throat> I woke up and I had an epiphany. I did not come to America to teach people how to fight. I came to America to teach people how to live better. And that's when I jumped out of bed, started working on a project, and wrote this book right here, guys. Yeah. That's the secret. That was my next question, too, my brother. There you go. The Gracie Diet. Uncle Carlos, who was not a doctor, realized almost 100 years ago, back in the early 20s, the important correlation between good performance and good health. Because him and his brothers, my father and the other brothers, were not big, strong guys. They were 140 pounds, 140 pounds, 45 pounds, soaking wet. They couldn't afford not to be 100% during a fight. Imagine if you're going to fight someone and you have a stomach ache or a gastritis or an ulcer or a major headache. That impacts your performance, of course. So Uncle Carlos, like I said, who was not a doctor, started work, reading the works of doctors and scientists and nutritionists, anything he could do to get information on how to be healthy. And after 65 years of research, he came up with a concept on how you should combine your foods at each meal so that you never have headaches, never have stomach aches, no gastritis, nothing like that. I'm going to be 70 years old, bro. Wow. Really? 70, you yeah. look great. You look amazing, man. Thank you. And I feel better because here's the deal. I never had a cavity in my life. I don't have stomach aches, heartburn, headaches, nothing like this. I wake up at you know, 6, 30, 7 o'clock every morning, jump out of bed full of energy. That's what you want. The question you have to ask yourself is this. How are you going to spend the last 10 years of your life? Are you going to be jumping around, traveling the world, having fun, training jiu-jitsu with your grandchildren? Or are you going to be falling apart, sick with some serious illness, disturbing and stopping you from having fun the rest of your life? That's the question, you know? Maybe the diet, the Gracie diet, is not a perfect diet. Maybe it's not. But it's the best one I know. And for me, the reason that I believe so much in this concept, which, by the way, is not a strict diet, a restrictive at all. You can eat anything you want as long as you combine the foods properly. That's the trick. It's about combination of food. I eat everything you eat. I just don't mix the way you eat. Basic concept. Number one, we don't mix starches. If I eat bread, I don't eat rice. If I eat rice, I don't mix with beans or potatoes. So one starch per meal, any kind of fish, meat, everything you want, and vegetables, it's one meal right there. And when I eat cooked meal that somebody's prepared with oil or fat or something like that, I don't mix that with sugar. 
So there's no dessert on the greasy diet. If you're hungry, order another pizza, have another steak, more fish, whatever, but don't mix that with sugar from the dessert, not even a fruit. So that's number two. Yeah. Number three, you must space your meals at least four and a half to five hours apart in between meals. That's okay. the, probably one of the most important concepts. A lot of nutritionists recommend people eat every three hours. Now this concept is falling apart more and more. People are realizing, this, you know, uh, they call uh, uh, intermittent fasting and this and that. They're pushing towards that, but spacing your meals is crucial. So the idea is the Gracie Diet book is going to change and save your life. Everybody who's now listening to us, everybody who does jiu-jitsu, if you want to be your best, it doesn't do you any good to be able to choke everybody you know and have a heart attack at 50. Come on, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> how, exactly. can you, how can you be a real champion and not be able to say no to a glass of Coca-Cola? You know that's not good for you. Come on. Right. No. Go to a restaurant with your kids, and the kids say, Mama, Mama, Dad, I want a Coke. And you say, wait, I bring my son a Coke? What kind of love is that? You know that thing is poisonous, guys. Don't do that. I agree so much. You're you're just you're 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 talking like I mean words of wisdom there with the diets and, and and longevity and health and fitness. We all live by that, you know. I mean, I like to say I live by by a, a good diet, but I definitely need to uh, get the crazy diet. But as a matter of fact, um, I I'm a I'm a chef also. I like to cook quite a bit. I work as a in a kitchen as well as well. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Excellent. Yeah, so, so send, you send me your address. I'll send you a copy of this when it's done. Definitely. Yes, yes sir. Oh, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, they look at the book, they think it's only fruits and vegetables, no, but that's no, not no, true, no. right? Not true at all. You can eat everything. You know, you can have everything you want as long as you combine it right. It's amazing. Really good stuff. So even <laughs> carbohydrates with like bread and rice and everything just has to be in the right combinations. Bread and rice don't combine because wheat and rice don't combine. But you can have the bread and you can have the rice, not together. You not follow together. me? Yes, that's the trick. You can have pasta. With fish and vegetables and salads and all that kind of stuff like that, lots of it. There's not a quantity limitation, even though you should eat without stuff in your face. You should, you know, eat to nourish your body without being able to move like uh, afterwards. But you should eat and always leave the table a little bit hungry. But you can have your pasta. You can have you can have pasta, bread, pizza, and toast in the same meal with steak and, and potato, not potato, but vegetables and stuff like that. You follow me? You can have all that. But don't have rice because rice with wheat or pasta don't combine. Now okay. you can have rice and the fish and the vegetables and all that, but with no potatoes or no bread. You can kind of choose that. When I go to a restaurant and the waiter puts a bread, a ba a bread uh, I'm starving, and the guy puts a bread, a uh, basket of bread and butter on my table, I don't just do that. First thing I do is I go in the bathroom, I wash my hands carefully every single time, and then I sit out, yeah, and I look at the menu. If I'm going to eat pasta, then I can eat the bread and butter while I wait. But if I choose to eat rice or potatoes, I won't touch the bread because starches don't combine. No. See, this is kind of a little detail you have to think about that. Yeah. There's one more thing I need to tell you. Yes. Amazing. Please. Thank you Thank for you. sharing. You're sharing so much knowledge, wisdom. Uh, now just... man, guys, I invite... This is so you get excited so you can invite me to come back. So here's yeah. the yeah. Absolutely. And then we also need to do the Inside the Dojo one day in your neck of the woods out there. Yes, yes. In fact, I'm, I'm building a new facility. I think you're going to get blown away by that. So, oh, oh yeah. So, <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, so go ahead, brother. I was going to say one more thing. Um, I have coming up very soon the Gracie Week. The Gracie Week is when I'm going to share some information based on the kind of stuff we're talking about here, give you some insights and some experience that I lived some ideas, some, you know, telling some stories. And uh, the Gracie Week, right here, coming up, there you go. All you have to do is go to whatever the, the link is you're going to put down there for me afterwards, Archie, please. So people yeah, I'll do it right now. Send their email so they can get information on the Gracie Week. It's going to be a free event, a three-episode event, totally online and 100% free. And all you have to do is link and sign up and send me your email, and I'll hook you up with that. And I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So be a great experience for everyone. So there it is. Uh, HTTPSGracieWeek.com. Register now. There it's go. at the bottom of the it's at the bottom of the screen. There we got the GracieMuseum.com tour and HTTPSGracieWeek.com. Register now. There you go. Great. Yes. It's right on, man. Coming up very soon. Yes. So good. Good stuff. Well, we'll we're honored to have you on. I know you're a busy guy and you got other things to do, my friend. Um, 
hopefully we can get you back on the show again and hopefully we can take that trip down there me and archie will definitely go down if as long as we're welcome we'll come down and we'll bring the cameras and get on the mat with you guys yeah you're, you're welcome as long as you promise to let go of my neck when i tap out oh uh, <laughs> i'm not that guy like, i'm the most i'm the most gentle humble guy i just want to go and learn man excellent the problem Thanks. i the problem i uh do have those when i go to a lot of schools nowadays uh, man, these young guys, uh, I feel like the instructors aren't teaching them that gentle flow. I and, got uh, man, you, you have to be careful when you go into schools, a lot of schools nowadays. Yeah, you know, the get hurt. And tougher. Yeah, I hear it. Super easy to get hurt. But uh, anyhow, we're going to we're gonna let you go. But when he when he goes off, Archie, stay live for a few minutes, okay? Yeah, for sure. We have a friend that came online. He put, he's, 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 he's uh, asking you if you can grab Archie and Tom's neck virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Probably all hey. like Oh, Xavier on, Ortega, he's another big fan of the Gracie family. He's a he's a jujitsu practitioner. Uh, he's a he's a big guy that started jujitsu, but he's a very he has a gentle aspect. I think you would like him a lot. He's he's not one of those guys trying to hurt people. Always good. always willing to help people. Uh, yeah, good good people, man. Good people. Our concept is to help one another. There you go. We should you know, be. That's that is that's our concept. Well, hurry on. Uh, thank you once again. We're going to let wow, you go. Wow, what a pleasure. Wow, thank yep. you. Yep, great thank pleasure, you my friend. Don't forget to send me your address, guys, so we'll talk soon enough, okay? Stay in touch. Hey, I'm going to sure. stay in touch with you. And You're a busy guy, man, so I'm, st I'm still going to try to stay in touch with you, though. Please do. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. God bless. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your week. Thank Everybody you. else, uh, stay uh, tuned in. We're going to talk about a couple more things here before we go. All right. All right, John. Have, have a great, have a great evening, my brother. Thank Good you. Job. Wow. <laughs> Dude, I didn't get to ask I didn't get to ask him like half the question, but but it's all good because man, he just kept the he just kept it going, bro. Kept it real. I mean he didn't pull any <laughs> he didn't pull any punches. It was all no. real. It was all um exactly the I way see. it was. You know, there was just I mean, he, he's just the real deal. You know, from the beginning from the UFC, I mean he, he called it like it was, you know. I mean when he landed, or I'm not sure when he landed to the U.S., but early on in the U.S., you know, the story of him cleaning, meeting people, and that's what life's about. Meet people, get yourself out there, and then, uh, you know, you come across the right people, and he sure as heck did. Hey, talk about, and this goes for anyone in life, guys. Like, you can really, I say it all the time, but, man, uh, he was talking about panhandling when he got here. You know what that means, guys? Standing on the corner asking people for money. He was homeless, and... uh Dude, that guy had a vision from the, when he was in Brazil and he came over here. He had that vision. And just look at where their family's at today. Wow. And uh, a lot of people, it seems to, I'll say, like a lot of people hate on the Gracie family and the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, not everybody, but, uh, but, there, but there is a lot of people out there that have schools uh, with this new evolved style of sport Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, I, I, I don't care. I just, I just know I give a lot of credit to them. And uh Man, if you a lot of people also haven't seen UFC one through four, and if yeah. you're a fan of the UFC and you haven't watched one through four, man, take a few nights to go back and rent it or get online and find it some way or another. And man, dude, watch those. That's what got me hooked. I, my mom had me in martial arts at an early age, and it, and, and oh, all there was in this town was karate, and uh, so that's what my mom got me into. And uh, it it was years. I was like. 19 20 years old when i first saw ufc and i saw hoist gracie go in there and uh and fight a karate guy of the same style of karate that i was in and i had never seen anything like that i didn't know that such a thing was possible you know what i yeah. mean with the jujitsu and i was yeah. hooked i've watched those first four ufcs i can't even tell you how many times that i've watched those over and over yeah no definitely you know what, what really intrigued me was that Again, keeping it real, they've never changed the tune as to it's all self defense, right? I mean, when he was, when Horian uh, was saying that he was in his garage, a black belt would come in, a karate guy, I mean, and then he would challenge him, and there was more challenges. So, so then, you know, the evolution or, or the concept there is to self defense, right? You're going to self defend, um, like in a street fight, like in a street fight, you're kind of simulating, right? He was saying, you pull somebody to guard, well, if you can touch their face, if you can slap their face, then you know you're vulnerable to a punch or something right so so his style i mean the ufc one through four was all about fighting not time limits just like he said the small guy versus the big guy severin versus you know uh uh gracie there 
there's a size difference, right? It took him 14 minutes, but he wore, wore him out. When I saw that uh, that UFC with with uh, yeah, Angel, just like me, man, you got hoist hooked hooked us all. He got us all hooked with UFC one. Hey, yeah, I wanted to crazy. ask him about it too because that UFC one back then it wasn't mixed martial arts. It was literally a straight kung fu guy, a straight boxer, yeah. a straight jujitsu guy. There was a straight wrestler. Uh, it was like that's just how it was. It was single styles, and man. Uh, Hoist showed us what jujitsu could do against each one of those styles. It was great, man. Go back and watch UFC one through three and four. Re Wait, UFC one, UFC one is 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 the one though. On UFC one, is that where uh, Horion said that Hoist did not throw a punch? Yeah, he didn't throw one single punch. <laughs> didn't throw one single punch. He said. Um, That's crazy. And even in when Hoist did throw punches in some of the UFCs, he used open palm strikes. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. That. But, uh, yeah, really tremendous, man. Tremendous what that family did for all of us and all of us that are hooked on jiu-jitsu now. Um, you got to watch with your jiu-jitsu, guys. You know what I mean? If uh, training straight sport jiu-jitsu, I mean, sports, if, if you're getting ready for a jiu-jitsu tournament, that's one thing. But remember, man, to keep it real and think about, you know, on the streets, there's no time limits. And uh, a, a lot of things change on the streets. You know what I mean? You may not want to pull guard. Uh, you may want to be on a top game. You know what I mean? You may want to learn how to take the fight down. If you use the real mindset, though, of a jiu-jitsu practitioner, uh, you could avoid the fight with this, this thing right here. You know what I mean? Yeah. With your mouth. You can avoid it with words and the right uh, mentality. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to hardly at, at all to get into a street fight. or a, You know what I mean? Uh, it's avoidable. It's, it's avoidable. How about that? This book. Now, not only the book, but then – you go to the, the the app and this sucker's on 3D, man. It's like, uh, what's that? Um, uh, it's just 3D. I, I, I yeah. the heck? That is so cool. You know, you're practicing moves on 3D or you're seeing the moves happen on 3D. That is crazy. And, you, and, and a lot of those moves, he's doing it with the dad, with Halio. <laughs> I know. Oh, right. man, with the technology, man, you got to love that, it where it's that going. That CD that I had way back in the day, it was uh, he said it was called The Box, but uh, it was kind of like that. But you'd put the CD in and, and with your uh, – with with the computer you could move the guy around and you could like you could see every angle of a technique uh better than watching a video on youtube today um and yeah. i think that's what that app will do and it's a different style of jujitsu guys it's a lot of raw basics but let me tell you everything starts with basics and basics are super important in jujitsu uh i in any martial art basics are where it's at but in jujitsu basics are very very important i think everybody would agree with that but yeah so Gracie Jiu-Jitsu guys, uh, like I said, it doesn't matter what school you're at. If your instructor's down and he has belief in himself, and no matter who your instructor's under, they don't, uh, you know, they don't mind that you go out and you learn things in other places. It's good to stay loyal to your school if you're competing under a flag or whatever. I agree with that as well. But you got to have an open mind and you got to be able to, willing to look around. You know, it's not all under your roof at your school. I can guarantee you that. So. Right. Yeah. All right. One more thing, guys. We need we need to cover Archie. It's coming up quick, guys. The Underground Fight Series Jiu Jitsu Tournament. Uh, Let me um, give you an update. Of, yeah, I, I'm having a lot of people hit me up. Uh, how do I register this and that? Listen, we got it almost filled up. It filled up real quick. We didn't know. We weren't sure how it was going to happen, but uh, it filled the card filled up quick. However, you can still register because there's always a chance, and this guaranteed will happen. People are going to get hurt. Some people are going to back out. And we're going to have to fill those slots. So you can still register and you'll be online. And if somebody does get hurt or they back out, we'll throw you in. Hey, and if you don't get in, we'll get, we have no problem giving you your money back or we'll just throw you into the next tournament. Uh, because, and you'll, and you'll, you'll be at the top of the list to get in because we're going to, this tournament's not going to be the only one. We're going to, the idea that Archie has and Mason Fowler and myself, uh, and the rest of MMA Fight Pass is this submission only concept, which uh, you guys have seen before with like fight to win. And there's a, there's other ones too, but uh, it's a different concept. You want to, and during this COVID and the pandemic, we want to think, keep things ex exciting, man, keep things entertaining. So keep yourself healthy guys. Uh, we're going to be testing, you know, uh, we're going to make sure everybody's COVID free. When we do the tournament and you're going to be able to watch this tournament online live. So you guys that are competing, it's going to give you a chance to be in a, a spotlight. It's going to be cool, man. It's going to be really cool. Uh, where is it? 
is it okay to talk about where we're doing the tournament? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so basically, I'll go ahead and mention a few words yeah. on that. And uh, so we have uh, changed the tournament location. The tournament will be at Halo Jiu-Jitsu, uh, thanks to Angel, you know, props to Angel. Heck yeah, you know, that man's a, an amazing guy, uh, and he keeps doing and, and never stops doing. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have it at, the, at, at Halo. Uh, registration is officially closed, but you can send an email to MMAFightPass at gmail.com. To, if you still want to compete, drop your name in there. Like Tom was saying, um, there's always going to be room. But right now, uh, we're taking names. We're taking names. Um, currently, we're in the process of matchmaking. We have uh, all the competitors that we want to match up with. Uh, we're going to be working with uh, Angel at Halo. We're going to be working with uh, Mondo at Trifecta. We're going to be working with uh, PMA, uh, with Eduardo Crema, so that we can match up those that are already signed up. So we're going to be looking out for more competitors out there. So all these coaches, uh, Mark de la Cruz at Virtuvian, uh, we're going to be giving them some names. Uh, Chris MMA, uh, Madera MMA, he too. So we have about five gyms that we're going to throw the, give them the list of those that we still need to match up so that they can uh, see who they have on their roster or their gym that want to compete. Yeah, and go. if you guys got some ideas, and maybe uh, in a respectful fashion, uh, you might have a guy that you want to compete against here in the Valley. And, uh, hey, give us a, you know, uh, put it out to me, myself, or Archie, or Mason, or Angel, and we can uh, we can maybe be able to set you guys and match you guys up. But, uh, hey, for the price it costs to compete nowadays, guys, to travel, to sign up for the tournament, to get the hotel room, the gas money, and all that stuff, I think it's a pretty fair thing that we got going on here. Right, Archie? Oh, uh, yeah. This is amazing. This is a amazing you know, opportunity I mean, for everybody. Um, opportunities, man, are arising. Yeah. And do this. This online might stuff might be the way of the future, man. You never know with these pandemics. Yeah, it's going to be cool talking about online. It's we're going to have uh, two cameras. Uh, we're going to have a, a main camera pointing towards the middle of this mat, and then we're going to have a roaming camera to get the different angles. So our uh, MMA Fight Pass Friday Friday show producer James Gilliland will be behind the computer at the event. Uh, controlling both camera systems and changing angles, switching between the good angle. And Tom Owens, uh, our own Tom Owens, will be the announcer of the fights, uh, calling all the fights as they come up. And then uh, at fights, we're going to have a camera also so we can do some interviews with the winners after the fight. Um, so it's a full-fledged show. We're going to have a photographer there taking photos. We're going to have a DJ with a lighting system. You know, we want to make it happen, and we're going to keep making oh, it We're happen. talking lights and all. Hey, you're going to be under flashing lights. Uh, yep. Hey, like yep. I said, you're going to have Tom Owens is going to be announcing fighters as they come out, red corner, blue corner. Uh, one of the things I've always wanted to do. Uh, we're going to have commentating, good referees, good Oh, yeah, live play-by-play, play, yeah. It's going to be great, man. It's going to be great. So the referees, live play-by-play. So the referees currently are Tom Owens. Uh, we got Eduardo Crema, uh, Mike Moreno's on board, and then uh, Mondo, Mondo Sleeping Diaz, no, Sleeper Diaz. Sleep Doctor, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and and so, but Tom's going to be a master of ceremony for all the uh, uh, referees. So we're ready. It's going to be cool, man. I can't wait. And Mondo Diaz uh, is an awesome, awesome, not just an awesome jujitsu uh, practitioner and competitor, but he's also an awesome coach. And uh, and he's really really good at refereeing. He's got a lot of knowledge in it. We got great guys refereeing. Uh, guys that I have a lot of respect for. So I'm super, super thankful. We got a lot of support for this event. It's amazing. You know, the support, it was outpouring and, and the support only showed we pretty much stopped registration 21 days before the event. Can you imagine that? Happened quick. We didn't know, how, like I said, we didn't know how it was going to happen, but went down quick. So that just means good. As long as, you know, I think the show will go down smoothly. All that we have a lot of experience with everybody that's uh, throwing the show. So the future is going to be bright for this show. That's all I know. Yeah, and the All website, right. the website for the show. I mean, the website for the show. The website is uh, underground yeah, uh, fightseries.com, and uh, there it is, undergroundfightseries.com. If you want to still register, or, or not so much register, but put your name there as a potential backup, because we're gonna have another event in a couple months. Uh, February, March, April, we're looking at the first week of April to get the next one going. So this is going to be ongoing every other month and a half, uh, two months. We're going to be having this event, undergroundfightseries.com. Send us an email at mmafightpass at gmail.com if you want in. Yep, and check it out. Even for this event, guys, 
we're always uh, we're always down for badass super fights. So if you guys put some, even if it's full, if you throw a, a super fight out at us, like hey, Billy Bob from over here is wanting to fight. What's his name from over here? And it's a good one. We'll make it happen. We'll definitely good make point. it happen. Good yep, point. We'll make it happen. So hey, thank you everybody that watches that tune in today, uh, and everybody that'll watch the show. And you know, most people that watch our show, they watch it while they're out running or they're they're jogging or exercising. They'll download the show and watch it later on. So anybody who watches and listens, uh, if you get a chance, like it, pass it on, share this, share it on any social media link that you got. Cause uh, man, uh, homie was spitting straight no uh, knowledge today, man. Ooh, and I don't yeah. care how many times you people think or how much you think you know about the history of jujitsu. Hey, it's it doesn't get any better than that, man. Getting a guy like that and he shares the story like that. Oh. Uh, I, I've heard the story so many times it never gets old. Hey, so how about that invite? We got that invite, man, to go do it inside the dojo in his new facility. I know. Hey, when the COVID clears up, me and you have invites. Hey, we have like the serious, the best jujitsu traveling vacation that people can get. Hey, <laughs> and it's going to be a small vehicle with like four of us guys. So we might have a couple more guys to hop in with us. Uh, it's it's going to be something else, man. <laughs> Philip oh, yeah. Dulay, thanks for tuning in, Big G. Another one of our fans right there. But, uh, hey, dude, that trip we are going to take, we might have to rent a van, man, for our crew to, to bring. We're going to do a Southern California. It's for sure. Trip. I know for sure. It's me, you, it's me, you, Big Xavier, and John yeah. Carlton are going for sure. There so we, uh, that's, that's our for sure camera crew and people that we get to go and get on the mat with these people, dude. And, hey, what I love about it when we go to do these shows, they, they welcome us in, like, so respectful. And like we don't have, we I've never had to worry about getting hurt or anything. And we get to we, we get to interview these people, man. And dude, we get to get the knowledge right from them. Uh, it's oh. something else, dude. Those inside the dojos, if you haven't watched them, go back and watch them. Like, they're all out there somewhere on the internet, floating around. But uh, yeah, they're, 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 on, they're on YouTube.com backslash MMA Fight Pass. Yes. There all right, go. man. Well, Tom, thank you so much. Woo. What up? I gotta thank my uh, my mom and my family, man, for helping me out. Hey, and every, I, I had knee surgery yesterday, guys. And uh, hey, I wasn't about to let this one slide by, though. It took a long time to get uh, Mr. Gracie on. Uh, it took a lot of going back and back and forth with him. It, it took a while. It took like probably like six months of me going back and forth mm -hmm. with him. I think to gain his trust. You know, he didn't know who I was. So he probably gets a dude setting him up all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, people, yeah. people usually want something, but you know, all we wanted was a little knowledge and history. But uh, if it wasn't for my family here, my mom and my my niece and my uh, and my stepdad helping me out, I, I wouldn't have been able to do this today. So, lots of love to the, my family and friends and everybody out there that that uh, checks out our show and you too, my brother. Thank you for keeping me involved in this. Tom, it takes a it, it takes a village. It takes a village. That's right, hunters and gatherers. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Tom, hey, well, we'll, we'll talk offline. Uh, I'll text you in a while or we'll, uh, Facebook. Yeah. And uh, amazing. Thank you, Tom. Woo. You're welcome. Yeah. You want to stay on for a minute when we go offline? Or you want to yeah, just get into it? You want to get. Okay. All right, yeah. guys. Hey, one more thing. I'm, gonna, I'm down for uh, like a week where I'm down. Um, I got an interview probably almost every day this week. Uh, I'm going to be doing short little interviews. If any of you guys out there got something to say, private message me but uh, i got a few guys lined up i'll be doing a podcast pretty much every day this week for the rest of the week guys okay so i'll i'll post it tonight but uh most likely tomorrow i got our friend from india he's doing big things Pali sathishwar uh he, we, he's been on the show before most likely it'll be him tomorrow and uh and like i said we're going to keep it going so anybody else who wants to get on angel lopez will be on later this week and uh, archie will probably have some guys on too so that's it, my brother. And then we All got you guys Friday, have a great evening. We got the, don't forget the Friday 4.30 show, Caitlin and James, uh, MMA yep. stream, MMA Fight Pass mainstream. Uh, Tom, you're always going, uh, you're, you know, you're always welcome, obviously. Okay, yep. we'll see you guys. Cool. All right, guys.